Hey, what's going on, Cashflow Hackers? It's Chris with Life 180. I am here with my buddy Denzel Rodriguez. We are here at the And Asset Mastermind with uh, Caleb throwing this event. Uh, we're on a lunch break and uh, figured we'd come and film a video and have some fun. And Absolutely. Denzel wants to talk about why right now is the best time that we've probably seen in multiple generations to be able to buy whole life insurance. So excited to get into it, let's go. Yeah, so I listened to a gentleman named Tom Wall. Yeah. All right? I've Amazing. never heard of this guy. He talks yesterday. Yep. Blew my mind with spreadsheets yep. and comparisons. One of the key takeaways that I took out of it was he basically said that whole life insurance is a better bond. Yep. Now, I don't even know what a bond is. I'm not, I'm not that educated. I, sure. I, didn't, I, I always understood bonds suck. Like uh, just uh, or or they're not that great or um, they play a, lot, a role. They play a role. Sure. Like I, this this is just like what I've heard about them and what my clients how they feel about them. They're just like oh you know it's safe, pretty secure for yep. the most part. You're gonna get a, yep. a a certain rate and you can buy a certain type of bonds. There's treasury bonds. There's mm -hmm. There's a Muni 10, bonds, 10 year, there's five corporate year bonds, corporate there's bonds. Estate. Yeah, there's all sorts of bonds. And it, it seems like a a very very big amount of money that, that, that people feel safe uh, yeah. to, to put their funds yeah. in. So when Tom For made sure. that comparison of when looking at someone's portfolio, usually it's, it's made up of stocks, mm -hmm. bonds, mutual funds, indexes. And so all he was doing was taking the portion that you all here watching that you're putting a portion of your money in bonds, and mm -hmm. he's just saying, and he was tracking over a 30 year period how whole mm -hmm. life beats out a, a bond. And, Historic. and historically, historically speaking, yeah. And he, sure. and he used different time points, mm -hmm. to going all the way back to the, the early 20s, I think, early 20s or 30s. He went totally. that far back. So uh, I'm, I'm curious your, your background, your understanding yeah. on bonds, <clears> and, <throat> and just based on what he said and why you agree with this. and, and some additional things that my audience can really like really sure. take away from and understand. You know? it. Yeah, no, so um, I think it's, it's an interesting idea. Um, one of the things that he touched on that I think is, is really, really important uh, to understand, um, because I've made a bunch of videos on this recently in the past year, um, and it's funny because I've, I've got some, one of, my, one of my most popular videos right now that's going on is a short video that's like, I think 40 seconds long. And it's all about why you should use whole life insurance instead of bonds. And it's interesting because it's it's getting a lot of activity, but it's getting a lot of hate, right? And it's getting all these people are being like, oh, my bonds are getting this and this and this. The statistics I was using were from a year and a half ago, because that's when I made the video, right? And so the bond rates were lower, performance in whole life insurance was lower, like all of it, mm. all of it is what it is, right? Yeah. So, and and I think uh, one of the things that, that Tom talked about in the video or on, on his presentation was the fact that during the first 10 years, uh, a bond portfolio is going to be a whole life insurance port the account 100% of the time. Right. Okay. That's exactly so, what Tom said. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's important to understand, but it's one of, and we've talked a lot and one of my favorite phrases, you can't solve long-term problems with short-term thinking. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's, it's just really important to understand like what is the intended use of the money that you have going into the bond portfolio or any kind of safe money portfolio, whatever, whatever that is. And, and if that is in fact, uh, the goal of that money is for safe money, emergency fund, opportunity fund, long-term stability, uh, for our investment accounts. Right. I, I think then looking from a long-term perspective, would you be willing to be a little bit behind, um, like, the growth curve, so to speak, uh, from a financial net worth perspective in the first 10 years, if you knew virtually with 100% certainty that from year 10 and beyond, you're going to outperform it, not by a little, but by a significant amount. Yeah. Right. Like I think most people, especially for you, cause you're a younger guy, right? Mm -hmm. Like and your audience is more probably youthful, mm -hmm. right? Than mine. I mean, mine is young enough, but I think at the end of the day, 
um, the younger you are, the more important this is. And okay. it goes back to, uh, at least for me, it goes back to like a fundamental philosophy. For me, I'm a big believer that people should save before they invest, but they should save with the intent of investing. Okay. Right? And and so the, if you believe in that, and then you go, okay, where, where, where where's the best place to save? Where's the most effective and efficient place to save my money? And, and if you think about it from that perspective, then it's like, all right, I'm saving money. I'm not investing money, I'm saving money. What does that mean? It means you can't take risk. So what do people do for that? It's savings accounts, CDs, bonds, or whole life insurance. Those are really the only places that you can do it. And when you start looking at it, it's interesting right now, and I'm just gonna call out the elephant in the room because a whole life insurance policy right now, we, we have to think, once again, this is all about thinking long-term, okay? Because if you look at a whole life insurance right now, and you even compare it to a high yield savings account, or a bond, or a CD right now. CDs, you can get five and a half, six percent right. on, on a one year CD. Yeah. It's a high yield savings account, four, four and a half percent right now. You know, So a lot of people look at the, the dividend rates in a whole life policy and be like five and a quarter, but the net net of it all, you're gonna be negative, negative. the first couple of years. Yeah. And the 10 year outlook based on current assumptions for dividends, you're looking at like three to four percent. So people are like, well, why would I do that, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, and it's, yeah, it's a logical um, question. Yeah. You should be asking yourself totally. that and really walking through that with, you know, a, a hopefully a really educated uh, agent like yourself or, yeah. um, well, no, not, not, you're not, uh, licensed. <laughs> I am licensed. Oh, you, oh yes, I that's got right. it again four oh, months yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. So you are. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm correct on that. That's okay. But, um, someone that can, I guess, just show the options like thoroughly through like the way Tom was running through it and. I'm just yeah. shouting him out again because just the way yeah, he, good stuff. way he ran through these these different case studies mm -hmm. blew my mind. I w there was things I'm not even talking to my clients about that are hidden benefits. By using a whole life, you're now saving tremendously on the tax on the tax expense. Side. And when you look at the fees of bonds yep. versus the fees of a whole life, there's something to be said there. Well, as it's well. not a net net comparison, right? So if somebody <laughs> could say. Chris, why would I do a whole life policy when it's earning 3%? Well, if you look at a 10 year time horizon for a whole life policy and we say that the internal rate of return is 3% at, at the end of the day, and then we look at a bond portfolio and they go, oh, I'll get 5%, that doesn't take into account the fees and the taxes in that. Whereas mm -hmm. with a whole life policy, it's net net after all fees, expenses, charges. Yeah everything and that doesn't even count for the fact that you get other benefits in the whole life policy that you're not going to get in a savings account or a bond or a cd or right. any of these other things right and so we have to if we're going to compare uh one asset to another one product to another we have to compare all things equally and we have to take all the variables into consideration and unfortunately um that's just not the way people, most people do it right right now help me with this yeah if i got a say a 10-year bond mm -hmm. and w once it's done the, the money's paid out all at mm -hmm. once, and then I would have to say, yeah, it's gonna be, it's right gonna back be into worth, the next bond. Yeah, you could roll it over into the next bond at that point in time. There's a lot of different ways to buy bonds. Either, the bond market is actually very complicated. Okay. Uh, we'd probably be on a yeah, call yeah. for two hours or, uh, so, you know. But when it comes to the distribution of a bond, mm -hmm. how does that work once it's completed? It's a lump sum to it's, my account? It's done. Yeah, it, it typically that's how it, that's how it will work. Okay. So you buy a bond that bond matures, you get a payout, right? So mm -hmm. just hypothetically speaking, um, if we did a 7.2% interest rate, right? The rule of 72, we take, we divide it by uh, 10, we got, or what, it, what would it be? We like 7.2, if it were, a, whatever it is, I'm, my yeah. math is all jacked up. But <laughs> let's say the money doubled, you put a, a $10,000 into a bond and you know, 10 years later you got 20,000. It, 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 based on the rate of return that the mm -hmm. bond was getting, it's 20,000, you're gonna get that. Uh, it's, you're gonna get the 20,000. It's it's very illiquid in the process, right? right? Uh, but then you have it and you have to figure out what do, you, what do you do with that money then. That's another that's another negative that Tom didn't really cover a whole lot of, but that illiquidity of that money carries a lot of opportunity cost. Correct. Right, because if you lock your money up, nobody knows what the next 10 years is gonna look like. Nobody knows how much opportunity is gonna present itself. Um, it may wind up being good, right? I mean, you may keep the money in there and it may be the best option for you, but chances are it's it's not going to be. There's gonna be opportunities that present themselves 
better economic environments, um, you know, for different opportunities to get uh, better returns that are still safe. Um, and if that's the case, like, do you want your money tied up? And you know, when but and that's another advantage of having a whole life policy uh, compared to a, a, a traditional bond is because if you if you do that, uh, then you have the liquidity of that money the whole time, right? Right. So what? So when I'm talking to a client that say has a bond and mm -hmm. they're they're going to keep rolling over, uh, how how long can you get a bond? Is it ten year the max? Oh or is no, it 30, 30. When uh, when I when I was born, my grandfather bought me. Uh, so I was born in 1980 at the peak okay. of inflation, right? Like. Mm. It was 13.5% inflation, 1979, right? I was born in 1980. Paul Volcker just jacked the federal funds rate up to 19.4%. 19 My grandfather bought me a 22% bond. 30 year, he put $500 into it when I was born. I don't remember how much it was worth, but it was worth a lot at the end. And it basically helped me cover a lot of expenses and stuff for college. And, and like, I mean, it was it was a twenty year bond. Sorry, mm -hmm. twenty year bond. Twenty year bond. Um, but twenty two percent for a twenty year bond. But you can get up to thirty year bonds. You can get up and, to thirty year. And, okay. and 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 like not to go down this rabbit hole, but when we talk about kind of circling, I guess it's not a rabbit hole. We're circling back to the original question: is why now is such a good time to buy whole life insurance? Yeah. Back in nineteen eighty, if you understand life insurance companies, the way that they manage their general funds. What they do is they're, they're always managing long-term risk and they're managing purchasing power. That's mm -hmm. why I always tell people, like, life insurance companies are gonna do one thing and one thing better than any other financial institution on the face of the earth, and that is to manage and preserve the purchasing power of your money, period. That's what they do. That's, that's their fundamental job with their general fund, is to get the best rate of return possible with the least amount of risk. That's why these companies have always paid a dividend, yeah. Right. That's why they've never missed a dividend payment. That's why they always have returns, even in down years. That's why they're always positive. And the bad COVID year, 2008, dot com bubble, Great Depression, they always make money. Always, 100% of the time. It's it's they've never had losing years. And so when you look at it like that, and you understand that, and and then in 1980 we had extremely high bond rates. Well, it was high inflation too, but what have we had from 1980 up until 2009 effectively, we had declining interest rates, right? Mm. But the thing is, life insurance companies had a lot of 30-year bonds on the books, mm. right? And so what happens if from 1980 to 2010, they, they were, in 1980, let's say they bought, um, you know, 22% bonds, or 20% bonds that were 30 years, right? 1981, maybe they bought 21% bonds that were 30 years. 1982, maybe it was 19, 1983, it went down and it kept laddering down, mm -hmm. right? But it kept elongating. So think about it, in 2015, this is where regulation 7702 mm -hmm. came in because what happened is nobody ever saw an environment where we were gonna be in this 0% federal funds rate environment for 10 years. Nobody right. ever nobody saw, saw it. Right. So what happened was that low interest rate environment for so long, it got it to the point where all of the old bonds that were supporting the general fund and allowing them to keep the guarantees and the dividends and everything mm -hmm. really high, mm -hmm. that got so stretched out and all those matured and they're like, whoa, we gotta roll this 15% bond into a 2% bond? What are we gonna do? Wow. They were toast. Yeah. And that's where the 7702 changes came in because the stress and the pressure that put on the general funds was immense. Mm. I mean, that's not all of it, but it's a huge a, part of A nice of it, chunk of, right? of the general fund. A nice chunk is dedicated to corporate bonds. Oh, 100%. Okay. Bonds, corporate bonds, treasuries, uh, real Got estate. It. Yeah. Back so, yeah. So now we're, so we're in 2023 now, yeah. and basically the, the biggest mutual life insurance companies that our clients are using to yeah. say practice either infinite banking or just high cash value life insurance policies, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Those insurance companies still have to buy these bonds, correct? Or, they all or, do, yeah. I mean, it, like- They're just yeah. getting a much lower rate. 100%, and that's where uh, over the past you know 10 years, every life insurance company, it, they are mandated to have a certain percentage, and I don't know the exact percentage, but it's a high percentage. Let's just say 60 to 70% of their general fund has to be in safe bonds. It doesn't have Got to be it. treasuries or corporate or like all the same balance. So, mm -hmm. but they have to be 
triple A rated bonds. Like, got it. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and those are the safest of the safe of the safe assets. Now, the reason r why right now is um, such an, a fascinating time, like for a nerd like me, <laughs> uh, you know, about buying whole life insurance is because if you, it, if you look at a, a, an illustration on a whole life policy, let's face it, like whole life insurance has a little bit of a bad rap because it's, it's wildly misunderstood, right? Correct. And if you don't understand, and I think a lot of the reasons it's misunderstood because there's a lot of bad agents that are doing things that they don't understand, yep. and they're they're selling it in ways, um, they're selling it off the illustration, let's face it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so so think about it, if, if I were an agent, and I sold you a policy in 1990, and that illustration was assuming, let's say the dividend rate in 1980, it was pretty close, it might have been a little lower than this, but just to keep round numbers, was 10%, right? So what, what, what I would have shown you is an illustration, and you look at the guaranteed section, then you look at the current section, and that current section is gonna show, here's what this, per this policy is gonna perform as at the current dividend scale, yeah. right? That's 10%. So now, from 1990 to 2010, 2020, whatever, All beyond, the, the dividends fire, have right? been yeah. lowering and lowering and lowering yeah. and getting cut in half, effectively. Yeah. And so that policy, that you look at the original illustration that you had with that policy, and you're looking at the performance in 2020, you're like, holy cow, this thing did not even come close. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And so now what happens is because, assuming I was not the, the agent that I am, and I, like, I didn't educate, and I just sold you like this, this spreadsheet, and I was like, Denzel, this is just see what you're gonna get, see what this does, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't educate you to really understand how it works, well then you're gonna be disappointed. And honestly, you, you probably would be hurt, right? Because yeah. if you're expecting that, right. and then you have half of that, for instance, mm. that could have really dire consequences on your personal financial goals, right? Whereas today. Whereas today, we're coming out of the lowest interest rate environment, long-term interest rate environment we've ever seen, right? Yeah. And we finally have interest rates going up. And so we are at the lowest dividend scale that these companies that pay dividends have ever every single at. year or, have ever been at, Okay. right? And we're looking at a situation where now interest rates are going up. And so I, you, you and I as licensed people are not allowed to look at a client and be like, hey, look at this, it's gonna outperform it. Like that's just not compliant, it's not whatever. Right. But I can say with very high levels of confidence because I know how these things work inside and out that there is a high likelihood with any company, by the way, <laughs> that whatever you look at, look at on a spreadsheet right now on the illustration, whatever you look at, it's probably going to be, it's probably gonna outperform whatever the illustration looks like 10 years from now. Because, I mean, let's face it, a year and a half ago, interest rates were, what, 2%? Bonds were 2.5%, you know? Mm -hmm. that, now they're 55 6%. And so what, what, this is the first time, literally in over a decade, 15 years, that the insurance company has been able to replace um, lower level bonds okay, right, with gotcha. new higher level bonds. Because here's the deal, right. when they once again, these guys are the smartest people in the world at managing risk, right? So like in the 80s when they said, ooh, this is a unicorn event, we can lock in 30 year rates at you know, 20%, yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, inversely, when 2009 happened and the federal funds rate hit zero and bonds went through the floor and it was horrible, they're not locking that in for 30 years. They're lo they're doing like three year bonds and they're, uh, okay. they're trying to churn that okay. money as fast as possible. So uh, now that rates are going up, it's gonna be a really cool experience to watch these companies start to like kind of help their general funds, general accounts recover and we're gonna see dividend rates go up. They're gonna tail, because make no mistake about it, and Tom said this in his call, uh, on, his, on, his, on his talk, these companies all compete with each other. Right. Because they know most agents are not gonna sit here and do what we do and try to educate people and really, most agents are just gonna sell off the illustration and sell be like, this is what you get. Whoever's promoting the best right. illustrator rate, that's the And so the whatever the best dividend is, is gonna Good. illustrate the best <laughs> for the most part. I mean, there's some variance there, but like, mm -hmm. for the most part, like, they got to compete with each other as far as that. And they all publicly, except for one company, publicly declare what their dividend rate is. And, you know, with that, if, if one company, I'm not going to name companies, but if one company does it 
everybody else follows mm. because they have to. It's a competitive environment. Gotcha. So on a micro level now, mm -hmm. if you're talking to a client that had a 10, 20, 30 year bond that was um, at a v relatively low rate. So, so, start, so when did the rates start to collapse? When did you say that the bond rates started to just- The bond rates really started to go down in like 2006, 2007. Right, okay. Yeah. So let's say someone got a bond during that period. And I'll and preface it's expiring it. It now. was going, they've been going down consistently since, since 1980. Okay. But it was 2006, seven where they started really getting like really historical tanked. lows, historical lows. And still people will buy them, right? Yep. So uh, yeah, but nobody's buying a thirty-year bond at that level. That's okay. the thing is like long-term bonds kind of like stop. They still exist. It's okay. still possible, but yeah. for, like nobody's buying them. Okay. Like nobody wants to lock their money up. They're gotcha. You're buying, but in that situation, there's like a negative return because you're buying bonds that pay out at less than inflation. So you're like literally losing purchasing. Power. Right. So is there a correlation to bond rates going up and then? A whole life insurance. 100%. Company. Okay, so there's a bonds goal. like, and uh, I have this. I don't have it because we're I'm not at home in my mm -hmm. studio in my mm -hmm. office. But I can show you uh, historical dividend rates and uh, bond rates trailing each other. Right. I think he yeah. showed something. Yeah. I think Tom so showed something actually, like that. Oh, I, there's a white part. I'm so tempted. But no, <laughs> like the um, <laughs> the uh, um, yeah, you can see there. So there's always a crossover point. So when when the, um, I'll do it here, I'll try to do it like this. So when bond, uh, when uh, interest rates, the federal funds rate and bond rates uh, were going down, what happens is the, you, have, um, you have the whole life, uh, the whole life dividend rates also go down. But what happens, there's a crossover point in there, right? Because dividend rates are always gonna trail bond rates right? Mm -hmm. And so as bond rates are going up, dividend rates are going to chase bond rates up. Okay. But then when they go down, bond rates go down, what's going to happen is the dividend rates are going to then chase them down, but there's always on the way down, there's a crossover point where the dividend rates are going to go higher than the bond rate. And is that right? what we're experiencing? And then it's going to, right. And then it's going to follow it down. No, it's actually the opposite. It's the opposite. But, okay. but, but, um, that's what we had in 1980, where the bond rates, uh, there was a crossover point, and the dividend rates have been higher than the bond rates because the bond rates were dropping and it was what it was, and there's always a trail because the dividend rates were from like, there's always like a two year trail typically, okay. right? But once again, we have to think long term, right? Long -term. And so it doesn't matter what the bond rates are right now, it doesn't matter that interest rates are growing up, I mean it matters, but like not from a 30 year perspective, right? Because right. in the next 30 years, they're gonna go up and down and up and down and like that's just gonna be the cycles of it. We have, and we have to know that. And so what you're doing when you put your money in a whole life policy is you're basically giving the life insurance company permission to manage your safe money bond portfolio for you, giving you other benefits with it and mm -hmm. allowing you to keep liquidity, keep liquidity of that money. Right. Now, are there gonna be times that the bonds are outperforming your whole life policy, Absolutely. like right now, right. right? Which the next maybe five, six years, that will be the case. And okay? and from our perspective, we actually want that, or because um, it because because we're saying that we're yeah. seeing, okay, as bond rates go up, just like yeah. you said, dividend rates are going to follow. Yeah. So exactly, a client locks in a, a say a relatively low dividend rate now, which they're in the five, six yep. percent range with most mutual yep. in, uh, insurance companies. Mm -hmm. And then that, that guaranteed rate mm -hmm. is another, I would say, key factor, right, in, in all of this? Yeah, I mean, the guaranteed rate is there. Um, you have the guarantees inside of the policy, which are, which are fantastic. Um, but like as bonds go up right now, let's just say for the next five years, uh, we're in this interest rate environment and bonds keep going up uh, slowly, predictably, consistently. Um, what's gonna happen is, it, the insurance companies are gonna buy those bonds. Mm -hmm. That's gonna improve the performance of the general fund of the insurance company. When you and I and everybody watching owns a whole life insurance policy with a participating mutually held company, yeah. it is exactly that you are participating in the profits of said company. So the better they do with their general fund, the better the right. dividends are paid out to you as a part, like a, effectively a shareholder of said company, right? And so, 
as their performance of the general fund goes up, the dividends go up as well. Now, let's say six years from now, rates start to come back down, right? Mm -hmm. What's gonna happen is while you were performing, the whole life policy will perform a little worse than bonds on the way up, but when they go down, you're going to have better returns on the way down than the bonds. Mm. And you're gonna have that, those, it's just gonna go up and down, it's gonna be a happy little dance. So to, to recap here, I buy a whole life. Mm -hmm. I'm participating in the, in the growth of the economy overall. Totally. Tax-free yep. or tax-deferred is the yep. properly way yep. to say, right? Yep. Tax-deferred. I'm also going to get to a point in my whole life insurance contract where the expenses are reduced. Oh, huge. Yeah. Right? Whereas a bond, you're consistently paying mm -hmm. a certain percentage cost, mm -hmm. right? Each and every year yeah. of management mm -hmm. types of fee on the whole balance. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a whole life contract, you're- It gets more efficient as time goes on. It's getting more efficient, right? The most inefficient time of a whole life policy is gonna be the first five years, you know? Inefficient. In, in, in most okay. inefficient okay. time of Got a whole it. life policy is the first five years. If, if, if everybody in the world had the ability to get a whole life policy and start in year seven, it'd be the most popular asset on the face of the earth. Okay. And it wouldn't even be close. Like, <laughs> it, it, it literally wouldn't even be close. It, there'd be no competition. Um, but because people don't think long-term enough and they look at, oh, I'm gonna put in $10,000 for my premium and I'm only gonna have liquidity of 5,000 or 6,000, like, they look at that as a, as a negative. You know right. what I mean? Whereas if we can teach the audience, your audience, my audience mm -hmm. here, if, if anyone yeah. has a bond, yeah. You already were locking this money up. Yeah, it's a liquid. It's a, it's a liquid. If you're putting money into a 401k, it's a liquid, it's right? A liquid. Like these kinds of things that people are willingly giving up control and liquidity of their money anyway, yet when it comes to this, for some reason. There's that disconnect. So yeah. being able to say, hey, the same money you're willing to lock up and get a safe rate of return in whole life, we can get similar. 100%, yep. And then over a long period of time, we can historically prove that you'll be better off yep. and, and you'll have more. Yep. And another thing Tom Wall pointed out was the distribution phase of those funds. Oh yeah. Where That's he's amazing. saying, if, you're, if, you're, if the stock market's down, mm -hmm. you now have a, another vehicle that you can pull cash from and, and the account itself be unaffected. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, um, that's a whole different that's animal. That's a whole right? different like, animal. That's, a whole yeah. different, that's probably a different video, <laughs> right? Like, video. we're getting into distribution <laughs> planning, right? Like, and like utilizing whole life insurance as a volatility buffer. So, we won't go there. We won't we're, go there. Sorry. But, like, about that. no, it's amazing. <laughs> like, I love it. And we'll, we should do another video before mm -hmm. we leave on that, maybe tonight or something. But, um, it's, yeah, the, the one thing I want to say because I, you know, I was, when I made the comment and I thought of something as you were, as you were talking, um, when we talk about the fact that if anybody could start this at year seven, it'd be the most popular thing in the world, but it's the short term. Um, I think it's fair that a lot of people, and I alluded to this a little bit, but I think it's fair that whole life insurance has a bad reputation because of the bad representation of the product over the past 40 years. Yes. Of the agents the deserved yep. it yep. for what? Because of the, the economic environment we uh, lived in, com with, which is the lower, uh, the reducing interest rate environment, which yeah. led to the reducing dividend scale environment, which led to the policies performing worse. Mm -hmm. And then you have that, that, that combination of that with agents not really educating their clients and just kind of selling off illustrations and uh, uneducated consumers getting involved in something they don't understand. And, and it's not that it was bad for you. Um, it was that if it, anything can turn bad for you, if your expectations are not in alignment with reality, or if you're not really putting your money into a product that you understand, right? Like, and so that can always go bad, no matter how safe the asset, right? And right. so I think that's where people like Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman and stuff like, they lived, like think about it, he built his whole reputation and brand and hatred for whole life in that environment. Yeah. And he saw a lot of people getting hurt. Mm -hmm. And I get it. And he, like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, it all makes We're sense. We're going now. into a complete inverse situation where you and I could sell somebody these policies and there's super high likelihood, no matter what we show them, it's gonna do better. Mm. That's pretty awesome. That's, it is very awesome. Yeah. Like. <laughs> 
Like what a what a what a great way to maybe uh, restore a bad reputation. Totally, you know, especially yeah. if us agents and yep. those that are learning, those that are agents learning from Chris, or even some that are learning from me and uh, wanting to get into the space, being able to just provide that transparency and listen to people like Tom Wall and yourself go go very very deep in the mm -hmm. in the historical track record when just simply comparing not someone's investment dollars. Mm -hmm but someone's savings dollars yep. in bonds, CDs, money market accounts, savings accounts, checking accounts, the m money that they think is in a safe location, yep. we now get to have the conversation of, hey, if all you did was redirect it here, you're getting this tax-free death benefit, mm -hmm. which is something that is not talked about as much. Even I don't talk about it. So sure. that's it's something on my <laughs> part I can totally work on. Living benefit. You got the living benefit of the cash value. So you have some liquidity mm -hmm. up front in the beginning of money that you already were planning on mm -hmm. making illiquid, right? Mm -hmm. So you have increased liquidity. Yep. You now have your money in a tax deferred slash can be used properly tax free environment. And then you can even be more strategic in how you distribute uh, your, your tax-free income in the retirement years mm -hmm. when certain markets are not doing too hot. At, at least you don't have to sell right. because you have all this gain over here. Right. Ride out that storm. When that starts to shoot up again, then you maybe turn this off, let this can keep growing at mm -hmm. that tax-free compounded and start pulling from here. So a very unique way of pulling from all your uh, quote unquote retirement accounts mm -hmm. to have that stream of income and just increase efficiency. Plus, overall. plus, if you if you do this at the right time and you do it with the right company, not all companies do this the same way. <laughs> um, but during retirement, I don't know how much everybody knows or how much you talk about this on your channel, but we're 70% more likely to need long-term care than we are to just die. Right? Yes. So when we look at that, there's a high likelihood that in our retirement years, we're going to need access to capital to help us with our medical stuff, right? So being able to, if you become critically, chronically, or terminally ill, if you get the policies with the right companies, that also solves that problem for you in retirement. Yeah. Which is huge. That is huge. And that, if you have that handled, it gives you permission to spend and, do, and live the rest of your life mm -hmm. in a more fulfilled way. And that right there, we can close it right there here. <laughs> it's been an honor to have you again and hang out in person and yeah, learn. Man. I got to tell my audience specifically that I've been learning so much more that I'm going to have more value to bring to you guys uh, to help you make even better financial decisions with your whole life policies, those who have those in place, those who don't. You know, I sort of been very linear thinking, short term thinking. Chris helped me think more long term with the way I design my own policies and, and the way I will uh, acquire more policies in the future. So there's so much to be said about just looking at track records of different products and, and how they line up. So it's like technically I'm involved in the bond market, but like through mm -hmm. a, through an organization that knows the best way you're allowing the best of the best to manage your bond portfolio effectively i mean you know in the most safest arguably safest location yeah. tax relocation uh -huh. and there's just there's once once i am able to get that point across with the client there's no argument now it's just a matter of how much yeah how long that kind of a conversation yeah, totally. so absolutely to reach out to to chris go to life 180 i'm gonna have all the description all the the links to to check him out and I, myself, Denzel Rodriguez, check me out as well. Yep. Uh, we both do levels of coaching and, and trainings and webinars, yep. and, and we're hanging out. And it's just a, it, it's a privilege. My position, 27 years old, it is a privilege to do what I do. Um, and so if you have the desire to, to create content like Chris or like myself, you can also reach out to us about that. Yeah, totally. Because that is going to help with the activity income that we generate, being mm -hmm. able to step into the social media space, monetize, create value just through your words. Love right. Yeah. So with that, God bless everyone. Have a wonderful day. See you and guys. we'll be talking soon.